I want to talk a little bit about cost before we get to the third one, because insurance is always such a big issue. Um, in your practice, just looking at, um, I don't know how many new treatments are coming out every year for breast cancer, not a ton um, with, with approvals and things like that needing to happen. But when it comes to navigating either drug shortages, insurance landscape, what has been your experience and how have you navigated that? I mean, I think it's a really big concern. I'm glad you asked about that, right? It's very easy for us to sit here and say, well, this is practice changing. But if I go back to the clinic and I try to get this approved for a patient, insurance is going to say, well, that's not the current indication for sasituzumab, mm -hmm. which it's not. Mm -hmm. And will they pay for it? We don't know. Um, I think we're seeing really significant co you know, coverage issues and cost issues, um, denial. And, you know, um, a couple years ago, we dealt with chemotherapy shortages. And, you know, these things directly impact patients. Um, and so sometimes there is a delay or often there is a delay between the data and the insurance coverage of these drugs. And I think it'll remain to be seen about what happens as we start to use maybe some of these in, you know, based on the results of this meeting in the clinic and will we get coverage? Um, and, and that is really hard for patients also to hear that you have this medication that is mm. has been shown to be beneficial, but it's really expensive and your insurance won't pay for it. How do you see the role of antibody conjugates um, evolving or what do you kind of hope to see us focusing on in the future? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's a great, great question. Um, antibody drug conjugates have really revolutionized how we treat breast cancer. And what's happening is we're moving them into earlier and earlier lines of treatment. So with TDXD, with sasituzumab, govitecan, right, their approvals and everything kind of are in later lines of metastatic uh, breast cancer. So now we've seen them here in first line metastatic breast cancer. And there are some studies now that we've had some press releases, some being presented of moving them into the neoadjuvant setting um, or early stage setting. And I think as that evolves, it really raises a lot of questions and we're managing side effects, we're managing cost, of course, um, and benefit. And I think it's a really evolving field about, you know, and it raises the question too, well, if we're using them early, um, you know, we want to make sure that we're really improving outcomes and can will the data show that by using some of these medications earlier are we improving outcomes and reducing the development of metastatic disease so time will tell but i think we're really in an exciting time right now with a lot of change a lot of transformation in the practice mm -hmm.